Hello and welcome to this video on four Excel gotchas. Some common booby traps in Excel that will catch out Excel users. In this video, we will present four of these gotchas and how they can be overcome. Now, this is the first video of a series of videos that I will be releasing slowly over the coming weeks. So let's dive into our first one. Now, for this first one, we are going to talk about cell modes. And one of the first things that users encounter when they start using Excel for the first few days is that when they type into a cell and they try and use the arrow keys on the keyboard, it does not move through the characters of the cell there like you would if you were writing an email or using Microsoft Word. The left arrow will take me to the next cell. Now Excel has four different modes and when you start typing into a cell, you are in enter mode. And the arrow keys on the keyboard do not move through the characters in enter mode. To do that, we need to switch to edit mode. And the easiest way of doing that is to press the F2 key on the keyboard. As soon as I press F2, you can see the enter mode switch to edit mode. And now when I use the arrow keys on my keyboard, it moves through the characters. Now taking that on another step, a very common scenario where you're more kind of intermediate level Excel user would encounter this kind of stuff is when you use an Excel window. So for example, I have a conditional formatting rule in the range in the top left there. So if I click amongst that range and come into home, conditional formatting, manage rules, and if I look at editing this, you know, quite small and simple rule, so I click inside the window at the bottom there and use my left arrow key, then I've got all kind of chaos going on now. Because once again, when I came into this window originally and clicked inside that field, I was in enter mode. But as soon as I use the arrow keys on the keyboard, I'm now in point mode. So moving the arrows on the keyboard is just moving the active cell around the sheet. And this is such a common issue in any window, not just conditional formatting, but data validation, defining names, all this stuff. Anywhere where you can specify a range or edit a formula. Now to do that, we know what the answer is. If I just delete that mistake, we press the F2 key, which converts it to edit mode. And now I can move between the characters in that formula and make my necessary edits without having to use my mouse and click in that sensationally small box provided. Gotcha number two is copying sheets in Excel. Now, keeping with this same sheet, at the bottom of the window, I'm going to copy that worksheet. I'm going to do it by clicking, dragging with my control key down, but any technique to make a duplicate sheet uh, will cause what we're about to look at. Now, the initial copy looks great, and that's what catches a lot of Excel users out. But there are things on this sheet that are not necessarily immediately visible. One of them is a defined name. So if I come up to formulas and click on my name manager button to look at the various names in this workbook, I can see that I've duplicated the RNG percent there. So there is one that has the workbook scope, which is the one on the copy sheet the one that I copied, and now I've created this one with the scope of only this worksheet. So it has the same name, and that will create some confusion. And typically a user will edit this sheet to their liking, so they've taken a copy of it to speed up their process, 
because that original name was probably intended to be unique for the entire workbook. And all of a sudden you're inadvertently building up this excess of names that you never plan to use and just creates confusion and bloats the workbook. Now, if I close that window, we have a similar issue with the conditional formatting. Now, this may be something that a user is going to need. So maybe not as important as the duplicating of names. But if I do come in to manage the rules for conditional formatting and I look at all of the rules on this sheet, there were additional rules that were not necessarily obvious when the sheet was created. Sorry, I mean copied. There was the one that we spoke about in the previous uh, gotcha, but I can see there's a couple there on cell F2. Now, these are just rules that I've created for no particular reason, just to demonstrate uh, this issue. But I can see that because they're not applying at the moment, I can't see the color on the sheet. I therefore wasn't aware of them and once again, the user may delete column F and not use that percent on here, but these rules have just come across. Nobody's going to clean them out and they're bloating up the workbook and, and just called it added confusion and adding to calc time. So I'll close this window and, and copying a sheet is something you have to be very wary of what else is in this sheet, because as we've seen, they will be duplicated. Now talking about alternative approaches, and that would have been to copy the range. And then we can paste everything, or we can even paste values only if we wanted to avoid any formulas. So for example, if I take a copy of cell F2, the one that contains the name range, or it doesn't contain it, but that is the one that's been named. If I take a copy of that cell, and I'll just stick it on one of these other sheets, it doesn't really matter where, I'll just put it on this small data sheet right now, and just paste the whole thing in. Control V, a full on paste. And if I go into formulas name manager, I can see there's no duplication of the named range this time. I've just got the original and the one that was duplicated from the previous technique, but it hasn't happened again when I copied the range, not the sheet. Now for our third gotcha, we are talking tables. I love tables in Excel. They make working with structured data so much easier. But something that I have personally always found frustrating when I'm teaching users in my courses is the selecting of a table column. And you may be selecting it to apply formatting or validation rules, or maybe because you're in the middle of a formula. But when you select a column, so for example, the sales column of this table, you have to be very careful where your mouse cursor is. If I hover my mouse over the table column there, I can see the solid black arrow indicating I'm in place. And if I click, I successfully select the table column. But let me click away for a moment. If I was to move just a tiny bit further upwards, I am now on the sheet column. And we can see that because the sheet uh, column header has got this green shading or this green fill. So you could argue it's quite obvious because it's gone green, but the actual cursor itself doesn't change. It's that solid black arrow, whether it's the table column or the sheet column. So I think it would be nicer if maybe the, the cursor changed as well, because I see so many people in my courses and when I'm seeing them work, that they will inadvertently select the sheet. Now this table is quite small, so it's quite obvious right now that I've not got the table, and that's why I'm demonstrating in a small table so that it is easy to see that. But in another scenario with hundreds or thousands of rows in a table, you're not gonna notice necessarily unless you saw that green header that I've selected the wrong thing. So that's something that catches a lot of people out, selecting the sheet column, not the table column, and then you're creating excessive formatting rules far beyond what you intended. So the answer to this is just to select that table column and just to be aware of that and be a little bit careful. If I did select that table column and apply some formatting just to complete this demonstration, I'll change it from pounds sterling to a euros format. And even though I've selected 
only the cells you can see, it is the tables column. And tables are dynamic. So if a new row was to be added to this, if I start putting in some data for this new row, that's control D to copy the content of the cell above, if anybody wondered. And I type in a value on this last one, I can see the euros format is applied. So I don't need to select additional cells to get that functionality. The table will bring that as long as I select the table column correctly. Now for the final gotcha, we have a pivot table one. Now this is another one that I have found frustrating for many years and I come across when I do my training courses. And that is how we format the numbers in a pivot table. Now, when I use pivot tables, I've always right clicked. I don't know why I don't right click that much generally, but in pivot tables, I think it's how I learn and it's just what I do. So if I was to right click any of the numbers in that pivot table, what I find frustrating is that format cells and number format come up in that shortcut menu. Now, number format is the one we want. If I just step away from that for a moment, the way many people uh, work when they're with pivot tables, and maybe this goes for yourself watching this right now, they would come over to the fields pane on the right, and they would use the arrow in values and go into value field settings or, or some other method into that window. And in here at the bottom, there's a button for number format. So that is number format the one that we want. But when you go on the right click, which is a little bit quicker, that's one of the reasons I like it, number format is there. But when people are starting using pivot tables, format cells is higher in the list and it's more familiar to users. So everybody, nine out of 10 people, will go to format cells, do the formatting that they want to apply, let's just take out the decimals, and it only selects, or only formats that one cell. Let me just undo that. So yes, they could select everything and do the formatting, but this is not dynamic. I'm selecting the physical cells to format. It works, but it's not what we should be doing. Hence why Microsoft provide the number format in the field settings window. What we want to do is right click and number format, that takes you to format cells as a window, which, you know, for people I'm training is so overly confusing. But when I come in here and I make the change, it changes all of them. I'm formatting the field, not the cells. And that's, you know, 99 times out of 100 what people are after, not format cells. So I personally find it an aggravation and it is a such a common pitfall that people go for that option from the right click menu. It's just there teasing you to be clicked. Same for the toolbar above, with the buttons above here. Same uh, seductive qualities, luring users to their fate. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments any gotchas that you would like to provide. As I say, there's going to be more videos in this series. They'll be coming out slowly over the coming weeks. So keep your eye out for those. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe so that you are kept updated of the latest videos on this channel. Take care and I will see you again soon.